So I, I got a uh, comment or a question a few, uh, may, maybe a couple weeks ago, and sorry, um, I said I wouldn't name their name. I didn't want to put them on the spot or make them feel uncomfortable, but um, they'll know who it is by the con contents of the video. But the question was, um, you know, I don't feel like I have the Holy Spirit. How do I? How do I obtain um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit or the, the power of the Holy Spirit or something to that effect? And um, so I'm going to address, I'm going to show this and what the Word actually says. And then I'm going to do communion real quick. Um, and, and to the person, I'm going to say to the person who asked me this, there's a lot of stuff out on uh, YouTube, people that you may watch. And... Um, it's kind of sad and they, they think that um, they're kind of doing their own thing and um, taking scriptures and, and things like that out of context and they um, they want to do their own thing because I think that they've had uh, they've had a problem with religious institutes and um, I agree with them that religious institutes and and religions dot doctrine is evil but that does not mean that religious institutes and religions um, practice or believe or do um, things that are biblically sound and scriptural and just because that the organization the religion might be evil does not mean that everything that they do is wrong or evil right and so we we are able to distinguish and sift this through the the word and so, in uh, to this person that asked me this, so in John three it says, "I tell you most solemnly, unless unless a man is born through water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God." Now, there's many people who will say that um, that the water, the, they'll say that the water is the spirit. Well, in this passage right here it talks about water and spirit meaning two separate things so they can't be the same thing it's saying water it's saying water a physical water in this world and you guys we live in a physical world bound by physical laws where physical signs um accompany accompany um the 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 unseen things right you have to do you have to produce the physical sign right in order to uh, uh, to receive the spiritual uh, blessing like take for instance right here elijah okay and he um he when he was going to ascend into heaven to be taken up he took his cloak right he took his cloak off his mantle and he hit the waters with it and that and that parted the waters and he passed through the the river right or a creek whatever it was and so that was an example a physical sign has to happen in order for the the thing to work to to move in the spirit so you have to be born through water and spirit and you guys this is this is actually really really simple right and don't let um don't let people trick you okay um and acts 19 it says with um they were asking uh uh, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They answered, no. We were never even told that there was such thing as Holy Spirit. Then how were you baptized? He asked, with John's baptism, they replied. John's baptism, said Paul. What, bap what was John's baptism was the baptism of repentance. But he insisted that the people should believe in the one who was to come after him, which was Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, right? With water. You guys, you're going to see every Jesus, all the apostles and disciples were baptized through water in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When Jesus was baptized by John, that manifested the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father, the heavens opened up. The Father said, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. The Son is on the ground. And then the Spirit of God descended in the form. It, they could see the Spirit. It came in the form of a dove. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit right then and there. Jesus manifested this, right? 
And so they were baptized in the name of Jesus. And the moment, and then after they were baptized through the water, Paul laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit came down on them. Okay? So, um, you guys, even though the disciples and the apostles were baptized, they still received the fire of the Holy Spirit, right? So, there's other, um, there is other, um, another type or level of baptism, right? But that does not mean that you do not get baptized with water in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, okay? That does not mean that you don't do that. That doesn't mean that you can pass around that. Because you must be born through water and the Spirit. See these men right here, they were born through they were they were reborn through the baptism of water baptism and then and then he laid their hands on them and then they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? But in um in Acts two um I think it was two, sorry. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, hearing this, they were cut to the heart, and Peter and said to Peter and the apostles, What must we do, brothers? You must repent, Peter answered, and every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this is how you do this, you guys. You be you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as the Lord Jesus Christ says here, right, in Matthew 28, and you receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. And then somebody can lay hands on you or you can pray to the Lord and, and, uh, um, and it, the Spirit will move you with however you receive uh, the fire of the Holy Spirit, right? But you guys, first things first is water baptism. You must be water baptized, you guys. You must be born through the water and through Spirit, right? So, um, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ through water, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, Acts 1, um, Acts 1 is an example where Jesus was telling them, okay, they had already been baptized with water. You guys, again, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this again. Jesus, all the disciples and apostles were baptized with water, you guys. Nobody was just uh, sufficiently baptized because somebody came up and laid hands on them. That's not in the Bible, you guys. Don't listen to anybody who says that. Okay, you're going to be cheating yourself. Just go by what the scriptures say, you guys. Just go by that, okay? Um, and that's pretty much it, you guys. That's pretty much um, what I wanted to share with the person who asked me that. Be, be water baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or in the name of Jesus Christ, right? And and find a way that somebody can uh, baptize you, or you can do it yourself. We've, uh, we've gone through this, you guys. You can baptize yourself, and then pray to the Lord. Say, Lord, I want to receive the, the fire of the Holy Spirit. And, and if if you really want and desire this, the Lord will make a way for you. I promise you. And if you need help, just uh, email me and we will help you out. Me uh, me, and some other brothers and sisters will help you get there. So um, that's all I wanted to say. And I wanted to do communion real quick. Um, I want to go to 1 Corinthians. And this talks about the Lord's Supper. And it says... For this is what I received from the Lord, and in turn I passed on to you, that on the same night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. See, he didn't just say this is bread. He said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial for me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. 
And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant of my blood. The new covenant of my blood, right? The covenant where it's going to be written in our hearts. Where whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial for me until the Lord comes. Therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. So anyone who eats and drinks, eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily will be behaving unworthily towards the body and blood of the Lord. You guys, this is the spiritual body and blood of our Lord after, after thanks is given for it, right? It says in the book of Timothy that when you give thanks for food and you impart a blessing upon this, that it becomes holy. It becomes holy because you're imparting it. You're consecrating it, right? So let's go to um, Matthew 26. Yeah. So it says, examine yourselves in, for, in Corinthians 11, you guys. So let's, let's, let's take this moment to examine ourselves. Lord, thank you for, the, for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to come to in this world to die for our sins. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for coming into this world and showing us how to live, showing us the way to everlasting life. And thank you for the sacrifice you made for us on Calvary. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming into our hearts and dwelling with us, giving us the divine gift to forgive all the wrong that was done to us and increasing us in us the seven individual gifts of the Holy Spirit that we may become the creatures in which the Lord has called us to be. And Lord, we confess and repent of all of our sins and we desire with all of our heart, mind, and strength to live holy, to walk blameless before you, Lord. And we we pray that you would hold this from even the smallest of sin, sins, instill in us, put in us a, new, a ruling and constant spirit. And may, may the blood, may the merits of the sorrowful passion and the precious blood of Jesus Christ atone for all of the sins we have committed this day and every day since our conception, whether they be sins in our thoughts, our words, our actions, and what we have done and what we have failed to do. And on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took some bread. And when he had said the blessing, it says when he had said the blessing, right? So Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray you, Lord. To please send your blessings upon this this offering of bread and wine that it may become the spiritual body and blood of my Lord Jesus Christ thus making it the spiritual body and blood of my Lord Jesus Christ and on the night he was betrayed he took some bread and gave thanks he broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said take this all of you and eat it he said this is my body See, he took the bread and then he blessed it and he said, this is my body because he made it holy. The spirit transformed it. And he said, this is, this will be given up for you. And then he took the cup and after having returned thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the blood of the covenant, the blood of the new covenant, which is to be poured out for you and for, for many for the forgiveness of sins. From now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine with you. I shall not drink. I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my father. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your Son. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your body and blood on this earth and showing us the way to life everlasting and for your sacrifice. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming into our hearts. And may the body, may the spiritual body and blood of my Lord Jesus Christ atone me and cleanse me and, and cleanse me and purify me from all sin and unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord, now and forever. Amen and hallelujah. I love you guys so much. Um, Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. I love you guys. I'm praying for all of you. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you guys.